You know those great movies you watch where you sit there and go, oh yeah, I forgot this movie was set at Christmas. That's what we're talking about in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Jim and welcome back to My Movie Obsession, a place for film obsessives. If you're like me and you're obsessed with the movies of the 80s and the 90s, you're probably in the right place, so please consider subscribing for lots of retro reviews. And if you're also an obsessive on superhero movies, you're probably in the right area too, because I talk about them a lot. But December is upon us guys, it is nearly Christmas. I am so happy, I love Christmas. Christmas jumper, decorations, rubbish, shitty Christmas tree. I'm loving it. But I thought this would be a good idea for a video, it's those movies that you watch where they have nothing to do with Christmas, but they're set at Christmas, go figure. So this is five great movies that you forget are set at Christmas. What are some movies that you guys watch and are reminded they're actually set at Christmas and you might bust them out this December? Let me know in the comments below. So the first one is of course Die Hard and it's probably the most obvious one on the list. I mean even I now and again though I forget it's set at Christmas because it's just now to do with Christmas. Die Hard is a fantastic action movie, one of the greatest action movies of all time and I'm actually considering busting out this December because it has the fun of Christmas and you know what? I could imagine myself sitting there on Christmas day whilst my turkey's cooking watching Bruce Willis fuck up some terrorists. Perfect. Die Hard is a whole lot of fun and even though it's a blockbuster action movie you know what, it can still be a movie that you watch at Christmas because it has Christmas in the background and it has some charming moments from Bruce Willis uh, near the end. It has amazing action and it has escapist entertainment and what more do you want from Christmas than escapist entertainment? I really am going to watch Die Hard this December. You should too. Next up is Batman Returns. Now I know what you're saying, you're thinking, Jim, I mean, you can tell it's set at Christmas. There's snow and black and white and... It's a Tim Burton movie, there's black and white snow everywhere in every Tim Burton movie. It's not a real giveaway. But it is actually Christmas in the movie. And that's why I really love Batman Returns and I'm probably going to try and watch it this December because guess what? It's a Batman Christmas movie. How can you get any better than a Batman Christmas movie? How can you get any better than a Christmas movie which has Danny DeVito biting someone's fucking nose off? That is Christmas, hardcore. And of course there's a very Christmas look to the film. Batman in the snow is an amazing image. The villains in the snow, this whole comic book world in the snow is a fantastic image. And you know, there is, there's snow everywhere, there's green, there's red, there's all the colours of Christmas, but in this morbid, kind of messed up, but still campy way. I mean, Batman Returns is in fact, that everyone said that they turn up the campiness in Batman Forever. I actually think Batman Returns is a very campy movie. It just does it in a very morbid and strange way. So it does have kind of some Christmas cheer about it because you can sit there and laugh at it and enjoy the kind of morbid, um, crazy over the top nature of this movie. So there's not much holiday cheer. I mean, Matt Shrek pushes a woman out of a window, but she then gets up with the help of cats. So there's a Christmas miracle for you. If people have looked at this movie over the years and have thought it's not very pleasant, for me, if you don't take it seriously, if you just watch it as a great display of Tim Burton's direction and a great performance by Michael Keaton, Michelle Pfeiffer, Danny DeVito and just a fun world, a crazy world unlike any other and then you know what, I think Batman Returns is actually a pretty pleasant experience to watch. While everyone else is watching the Polar Express, I'll be watching Batman Returns. And then the Polar Express. The next one is Edward Scissorhands. Now of course it's a Tim Burton movie so yeah, it's already black with snow. But Edward Scissorhands, you know what? I think this is actually a really nice Christmas movie because you know what? It's about accepting people who are different and being kind to people who are different and realizing that lots of people have got hearts of gold that we don't see on the outside. You have to look inwards sometimes and that's what Christmas in a lot of ways is about. But it does have this Tim Burton fucked up edge where by the film everyone turns on the git, but you know, for that kind of hour and a half, people are lifted up by Edward Scissorhands, this kind of freaky, um, really, really kind, nice person, really gentle person, who has a scary exterior. And it's nice, it's just a nice story of um, friendship developing uh, between this family and Edward Scissorhands. They take him in, so it's a very Christmas theme. Johnny Depp is just the most charming guy in the world in this film. You know, he's a big heartthrob at the time, and to see him make this terribly scary character, you know, to look at him. The first time I saw Edward Scissorhands, when she goes into that fucking attic, I hid. I 
shat the bed. But you know what? As soon as he starts talking, as soon as you get to know him, he's the most sweet guy ever. And this movie makes you think that you could actually maybe live with Edward Scissorhands. There's a sweet nature to this film and it's a sweet love story. And you know that scene where Edward Scissorhands is giving Winona Ryder that snow shower? That sounded wrong. Is lovely. It's an absolutely romantic, you know, beautiful scene. And it screams of Christmas. And the score of this screams of Christmas. The score touches your heart. And what is it you want at Christmas? You want to sit there and be enchanted. Do you want to sit there and have your heartstrings pulled? And Edward Scissorhands does it. That score just absolutely rips me apart every time I hear it. It's a wonderful, beautiful score by Danny Elfman. Edward Scissorhands is amazing. I think it's a really appropriate movie to watch for Christmas. Even though it does end quite morbidly and quite sad, there is a nice melancholy feel to the film at the end. And that's Christmas too. So Edward Scissorhands, you know what? It's a non-Christmas movie set at Christmas and it's pretty bloody Christmas. So the next movie is Hook and there is a full review of Hook on my channel. Go and check that out uh, as part of my retro reviews. But I had to include Hook because guess what? It's set at Christmas. And you know what? It has those Christmas themes to it. You know, the idea of the father and the family being apart and coming back together. That's a very Christmas theme. Um, it has London snowy at the start of the film in some of the best moments in the film before they even get to Neverland and it has that pull at your heartstrings style um, it's one of the most sentimental Steven Spielberg films and I will never turn on Hook the amount of people who have turned on Hook over the years I'm never turning you're never going to get me to turn to Spielberg no matter how much you shit on it and what's more Christmas than kids just running riot playing games and being out of control and the Lost Boys do that in this film. But the Lost Boys even have Christmas. I'm starting to feel sorry for them. They don't have parents. They don't have Christmas. But they can eat food out of thin air. So life can't be that bad. There are several moments in Hook that really do capture that Christmas spirit. I mean even the ending of the film is kind of like It's a Wonderful Life. When Robin Williams returns to his family. And he realises the important things in life. He realises everything he was taking for granted. It's pretty much the ending of It's a Wonderful Life. So Hook is fantastic guys, a great battle of good and evil, a great children's movie, a great nostalgia movie, and just a brilliant movie to watch at Christmas. And lastly it is First Blood. Yes, if you didn't know, First Blood is set at Christmas. Sylvester Stallone brutally laying waste to a forest full of people. It's Christmas guys. Rambo shows no Christmas spirit at all, but not the cops guys, they're absolutely horrible to Rambo. You're in the Vietnam War. Motherfucker, I'm gonna shoot you in the face. I mean, what's wrong with being at Vietnam? I know a lot of the soldiers were gits, but you haven't got any evidence that Rambo did anything. I really feel sorry for the Vietnam soldiers the more I look back at, you know, the good Vietnam soldiers, obviously. The more I look back at this time, they were treated abominably. So there's no Christmas spirit shown by anyone in this film, including Rambo. He don't care, he ain't full of forgiveness, he's got a knife. But strangely enough, Rambo doesn't actually kill anyone in this film, he just you know, just uh, hunts people and hurts them. But he doesn't actually kill anyone, so maybe he's got a little bit of Christmas spirit in there. First Blood is a fantastic movie. You know, it's, uh, you know, people think of the Rambo movies as action movies. I actually think of the first one as a drama and a great character study of this guy. And it's a tragic story, and it's one of Sylvester Stallone's fa most fantastic performances. And you know what? Christmas movies are supposed to tug at your heartstrings. That ending monologue by Sylvester Stallone is pulls at my heartstrings and it's one of the best acted um, ending monologues in all of film in my opinion. And there is a nice friendship in there between Rambo and his former boss uh, Troutman. It's a nice little sweet friendship of these guys who have obviously seen hell together and they respect each other. And Troutman doesn't want Rambo to make a mistake, Troutman wants Rambo to be the bigger man, Troutman wants Rambo to walk away. First Blood is a fantastic movie, it's one of the best Sylvester Stallone movies and it's a bit of an unorthodox one to watch at Christmas. But you know what, it has some serious themes to it, it has some um, fantastically shot sequences, a great story that you're really invested in, a fantastic finale. But if you need another reason to watch it, it's set at Christmas alright guys. Just, you know, if your girlfriend doesn't want to watch First Blood, just go look, look, there's some Christmas trees and there's some decorations, it's set at Christmas, nah nah nah. So once again guys, what are some movies that you guys recommend that are 
Movies set at Christmas, but they're not Christmas movies. And which ones should you add to your watch list this Christmas? Because they actually have some quite Christmassy things about them. Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching everyone. My name's Jim and I'm obsessed with movies and this is Christmas month on my channel. Gonna be doing lots and lots of Christmas movies, mainly retro Christmas reviews. I'm gonna be reviewing Muppet Christmas Carol, The Grinch, the Home Alone films. I'm gonna be taking quite an in-depth look at. I'm gonna be doing several videos on Home Alone films. I absolutely love those movies. One to three, of course. Four and five, I might talk about them briefly. <sighs> So thanks for watching everyone and if you enjoyed this video why not subscribe if you're a movie obsessive and you love talking about retro movies from the 80s and 90s you're also a big superhero movie fan but if you want to jump on to this channel in December and watch a load of fantastic, enchanting and heartwarming Christmas content from me then subscribe also. So thanks for watching once again everyone and I will see you in the next video. December has begun. Get yourself a shitty Christmas tree. Look at that crap.